Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Production, and today I want to go over something in M Sound Factory I've been waiting for for a long time. I know lots of people have been asking about it, but it will soon be here, and that is the granular sampler. So, soon, uh, version 16.2 should come out. This is kind of a release candidate, so it's not officially out yet, but hopefully it should be, maybe by the time you get this. And it's going to contain lots of new things, but one of the most interesting is the granular sampler. So let's check it out. I had a chance to play with it just for a few minutes yesterday. So I thought today I would do this kind of like walkthrough and kind of experimentation so we can both discover things together. So let's go into the edit screen here. Uh, just for this, I'm gonna move the attack down and move the sustain up. And one thing I'll move up is the global release. I did this yesterday and like one of the things I was like, why is there the release? It seems weird. And it's because I had the global release down. So let's move that up. Now let's just add one in. So we see it right here in the generator section where it should be. And it's the granular sampler. So let's open it. Here we go. Now, one thing about this is it's really big. So I was like, what, Where, where's the rest of it? but you just pop it out here. You can can scroll down, but I, I prefer to pop it out. And there's even stuff down here. But let's go through this one by one. The first thing I wanna do is I actually wanna, it starts with these already assigned, but I really don't want that. So I'm gonna turn these off just for my own sake. It'll be easier that way. Everything's off. Now it starts off here and here's where you can find all your samples and put them in there. And this shows the rate, this is the duration of the grain, this is the position inside of the sample, this is the probability, so if you have it at 100%, every time 50 milliseconds passes, a grain's gonna come out, but if you move it down, you know, it may not happen every 50 milliseconds, it may be the third 50 millisecond uh, chunk, etc. Duration, how long it lasts. Width is a little bit of a strange one, because I've found that it kind of sends the grains to one side or the other if it's 100%, whereas if you put it at 0%, it will just come out through the center channel. But because lots of these are stereo, it won't actually be, you know, the mono. So one thing to uh, check out there. And also the width is pan. This makes it a right-left switch. So that's whatever it is. Anyways, the detune, let's get into this. You probably don't want to hear me talk. So let me set the rate up first so you can hear what's happening. Do vocal sample. So there we go. Not great sounding. Another thing is these samples, when you pull them in here, it's just going to play it. And it's like, hey, this is the wrong pitch. Sometimes by clicking this calculate pitch, you can actually kind of tune it in here to the right note. So we'll set the correct root and fine tune it. So let's hit process. There we go. Let's see if this sounds better. If nothing else, it should be in tune. And as you're hearing, let me move this down here. But I have the rate, it's really long. So let's move this here. And if you see the bottom of my screen here, you can actually see them moving. You can turn that off if you want like this, but I like it on. Uh, let me try another one. Let me try one of the strings here. And calculate pitch, make sure this is all tuned correctly. Let's turn the attack off. Let's see if I can hear any of the beginning of this. So if you want to hear the, the graininess, I'd turn the attack down. But if you don't want to hear it, you can turn it up. Like that. And of course, you can adjust the rate and everything there. I just want to show that. Another cool thing is I really love the re reverse. You turn it to 100%, it'll start moving from this side and going backwards like this. Like that. And here's where the position can help. So it's starting there, but if I want to start even farther back, move the duration down a bit. There, let's move the position here. So it should start around here. And now I have it at 100% reverse. So they're all gonna start going from right to left. If you have it zero, it goes from left to right, but you can put it 50% and half of them are gonna go left and half of them are gonna go right like this. And 
And of course you have the max grains here. That's probably easy to understand. Volume's easy to understand, I believe. Uh, the release is, these are in percentages, I believe, because it has to do with the duration. So it'll be 23% of the duration. The release will be 25% of the duration, etc. The compensation, I had to look this up. The compensation determines how much it will be, uh, the volume will go down depending on how many grains you have. So if you, like you say, you have lots of grains going at a fast rate, like it's, the volume is going to go up. So if you had it 100%, it's going to bring the volume down. So it's about equal to if you had uh, a slower grain rate. So that's what that does. And of course you can set this to 0%, 100%. Sometimes I find it's too much. I was like, oh, it's a little bit uh, soft. So maybe sometimes like 75 or something is good, but do whatever you want with that. So there we have this. Let's play with this a little bit. Let me play a chord. Ooh, I'm sorry, I'm clipping a little bit there. I should probably go into here and set the limiter. Kind of doing this off the off the top of my head, so I apologize for that. But that's what you get there. Let me do a lower note. Now, of course, within Sound Factory, the really interesting thing is all the different modulations and things. So for here, this detune, I think this was on already, but it has like the true noise. So if I move this up. I have, it's set up with already with up and down. So the true noise is just going to have every grain just slightly different in tuning. I don't want it like this much is too much. This is a hundred cents up and down. So that's going to sound really out of tune, but let's actually, yeah, if I have it at yeah hundred, it's already there, but let's try maybe a little bit less than 10 cents up and down like this. sounding pretty good. Now let's think of some other things we can do. I'll, I'll show you the width. Let me move this, the rate down so you can kind of hear what the width is doing. And you'll be able to see if I move this out, how some of them will be on the left side and some of them will be on the right side like this. So you see, it just kind of randomly assigns the grains left or right. It's easier to hear if you turn the rate down, but when you have it up like this, you don't really hear that. Of course, if you turn it all the way down, like here, and I'll turn that up again. It's in mono, but I believe some of the other samples aren't in mono. Let me try to play some of those. So you see here, there's actually quite a few here, like this air spray. So this is already in stereo, so that doesn't change it. But if I move it here, let's try 50 grains, see what this sounds like. Let's try bamboo jungle. Oh, that actually sounds really cool. I, I like that. Brush bristles. I haven't tried this one before. Oh, that's cool. So you can see in here in the textures, there's all sorts of really interesting things in here. Uh, let's see. Tones, organic, synthetic. We have bass, strings, did vocals. Let's try a wind here. And let's calculate this. The ones that are... Uh, Atonal, I don't think it's really necessary to calculate the pitch, but for the tonal ones you do because sometimes you go on here and it's like, wait a second, this isn't in tune with the rest of my song. So it's good to calculate this and try to get it in tune. So let's hear this wind one. That sounds really good to me. Now with this, let's actually, let's look at some other things you can do. So we can make this smaller so we can see everything. Let's look at the pitch. Now from here, I could move this up octaves like this. So 
It's kind of cool down two octaves. Uh, it's hard to hear, but it sounds cool. And you can change this to constant mode, and that means every single key you play is going to be the same note. So now it's... I can play chords. Like that. But if I put on constant... It sounds like I'm playing the same key, but I'm not. I'm playing different keys. So if you have uh, a tonal sample, you might want to use the constant mode. So it's there if you want. And let's look at one last thing here. Let's look at the harmony in here. So this is like a harmonizer, and it's going to allow you to make chords with just pressing one note. So here it is without. Here it is with the harmony on. I'm guessing it's just choosing randomly for each grain if it's going to be uh, pitched uh, up uh, minus three. Is that plus three, minus three, plus seven, or minus nine? So, of course, you can adjust that however you want. You can change the key, do whatever you want there. I think it's kind of a nice thing to have in there. Uh, let's look at a few other things. I want to do maybe a video showing exactly how to do specific sounds and things. But for now, let's look at just a few interesting things here. Do I have impacts in here? Look at drums. Found something cool with... Is there a, not scrape metal. I think there was one here that was a cymbal that sounded cool. Plastic drum, pitch drum, resonant drum, drum roll, scrape metal, simple shaker, tambourine. Uh, wasn't there a crash in here? Maybe. Yeah, crash symbol. There we go. Yeah. Another thing, it's starting here. So make sure when you're doing this, like, why is there no sound? I see it there. And that's because this is too low. So let's move the position back. Okay. I'm going to move the width down and let's turn that attack all the way off. Okay. And of course, you can use a custom path, so you don't have to use these uh, samples if you want. You could use your own custom samples, so there's that too. Now, since we have that, I thought a cool thing to do was reverse it like this. That sounds nice, but I think it's even more interesting if we change the rate, like this. Now that's a really cool sound. Of course, it'd probably be better with some reverb or something on it, but you get the idea. The thing is, we probably want to modulate that. And the great thing is with M Sound Factory, just click on this and we can use whatever we want. Let's use the mod wheel here. And how much do I want it? Let's move it down so it decreases to about not 3.1, maybe 23. That seems good. And so let's play something and move the mod wheel like this. There's a lots of fun things you could do with that. I'll probably be doing some videos on like grain clouds and maybe some other interesting effects. But I thought this was really cool. There's all sorts of things you can do with this. Uh, check out the samples yourself because there's a lot in here. I really can't go through all of them in here. So just in the M Sound Factory Essentials, there's impacts. You can see there's a bunch of different things in here. You have multi-textures, which there's blown textures bowed steel textures, etc. Sci-fi textures. You have actually want to hear one of the sci-fi textures. Let's see if that's interesting. This. So as you can see, there's a lot in here. I didn't do a particularly uh, thorough job with this today, but hopefully I went over all of the main features here. Uh, if there's something I didn't, let me know in, in a future video I'll get to this, but I'll definitely be doing more videos on the granular sampler. This is really cool, and I'm looking forward to having a lot of fun with this and making lots of cool stuff. But anyways, if you have any questions, leave them down below. Give me a thumbs up if you like this, and check out all the other plugins at meldaproduction.com. Till next time, see you.